everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the fourth module of um, 18 cs 44 it's a very short module we'll be just discussing the what are the characteristics and quality attributes of the embedded system if you like the video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, coming to the first one characteristics what defines a um, embedded system okay what are the characteristics like a characteristic of a person is um, the person's honesty and brave compassionate unselfish loyal and all okay so let's uh, discuss the characteristics of an embedded system the first one is embedded systems are application and domain specific means uh, for example if you consider an example of microwave and air conditioner this uh, both have embedded system okay so you can't exchange the embedded system of each of these because it's uh, defined for um, performing a particular task okay so these are application and domain specific that's the first one. Second one is reactive and real time. Reactive and real time means the embedded system should be a, a capable of reacting and producing result based on the real time input. Means live events and all, right? That should be handled by the embedded systems, okay? And there, it's not necessary that all the embedded systems should be um, real time because some of the embedded system, like the flight control system and the anti break systems, are not real time, okay? And the third one is operations in harsh environment. Embedded systems are used worldwide, so there are many uh, changing environments, and the embedded system should be capable of um, capable of working in a harsh environment, okay, like a dusty one or a high temperature one. So the materials which we use uh, to design this uh, embedded system should be such that it should be capable of handling high temperature or dusty environments, okay. And the fourth one is distributed. Distributed means in a system, it's not like uh, there is only one embedded system performing the whole task. There are many independent um, systems in it. For example, consider an example of ATM machine. In ATM machine, there are many embedded systems. One for performing the transaction. Second is for generating currency. Third is for displaying the results and printing the results and so on. So they all um, uh, independent embedded systems combined to perform a task, uh, which is their common goal. Okay. And the fifth one is small size and weight. If you plan to buy a new phone, which one you will buy? A small and light one, right? So in the same way, embedded systems should be designed, which are small and lightweight. The major disadvantage of all the devices is its uh, power consumption. Means whenever a device is used, heat is produced. So the embedded system which you design should be able to um, minimize the heat dissipation in any system okay so it should not consume more power and it should dissipate less heat the lesser um, the lesser heat dissipation the better your product is how do we know which is the best quality um, embedded system there are few factors uh, which is divided into two parts first one is uh, operational quality attribute that means during operation what are the factors to be considered that can be um, that can be taken into consideration for uh, a better quality product. The first one is response. It should respond very quickly. Second is throughput. That means the rate of production in a given time. And third one is reliability. How, how much percent you can rely on the system for the proper functioning. Fourth one is maintainability. Maintainability means um, in case the system goes into failure, what are the measures you have taken to uh, recover from the failure? The uh, fourth and the fifth one are the same. Uh, security and safety means the how, how safe the data is in the embedded system and how much safety analysis you have carried out so the anticipated or the probable or the probable uh, damages which can happen in the future and how well you can cope up with it okay if the damages happen how well you can um, apply your strategies to recover from it okay so these are the operational attributes coming to non uh, non operational attributes that means if you design a system it should be easy to understand and test and debug it okay and second one is evalu uh, evolvability means uh, according to the changes in the uh, environment and the circumstance, the um, embedded system should also evolve to uh, meet the changing needs of the environment. Okay, so that's the second one, and third one is portability. Means if you design an embedded system for um, Microsoft, it should be able to work in Apple as well as Linux and other operating systems. Okay, so the more uh, diverse it is, the more um, useful it is. Okay. And the fourth and the fifth one is like uh, time to prototype and uh, market means the time I start uh, building my product, how much time it will take and how much cost it will take me, uh, how much cost, uh, how much cost it will take to build the final product. Okay, these two are the very important factors which both the end user and the product manufacturer will monitor. Product life cycle is defined as when the product starts developing, there will be no revenue. And when it's uh, getting introduced and get some uh, validation in the market, it will start uh, generating revenue. It grows till a particular point, uh, which is called as product maturity. After that, the revenue won't increase more. And uh, till what time it is relevant in the environment, it will stay there and people will use. After that um, gets over, means if it becomes outdated, it will start to um, reduce in its uh, value and that's uh, that phase is known as product retirement 
embedded systems are of two types first one is application specific and second one is domain specific let's uh, discuss each of these with an example for application specific the um, device is uh, washing uh, washing system that means washing machine there are two types of washing machine first one is front load washing machine and second is top load washing machine okay so uh, these both have uh, roughly three categories of the components means all the components will fit into these three categories what are these three categories the first one is actuator that means the it consists of um, motorized agitator and tumble tub water drawing pump inlet uh, valve okay means the main components of the system are coming in this category the second one is sensors sensors means they consist of water temperature sensor level and level sensor and so on okay by that um, the environment will be observed and based on that the changes will happen inside the machine and the third one is control part this consists of the micro uh, microcontroller and the processor okay this is embedded with the sensors and actuators to um, give the controls to the uh, these both how to perform and what to perform okay and and the working of the washing machine is as follows the user will um, input uh, the values means uh, till what time the washing machine should run and other uh, other inputs and those will be sent to the control part along with the data of the sensors okay and uh, by using these both data the control part will um, direct the actuator to do uh, to do the task okay and the actuator will perform the task of uh, washing the clothes and then after it gets over the time will be displayed in uh, leds means how much time is left for the task to get over so this is the working for the uh, application specific it's an application specific it's not domain specific we'll be discussing domain specific in the next example so see here actuators are uh, actuators do the mechanical task controllers give the directions based on the input values of the user and the sensor data okay the next one is the domain specific this means that it's uh, not a single application there are many applications embedded in a single system okay many applications embedded in a single system let's observe closely here first one is instrumentation means what are all the tools used for that uh, separate embedded system is there and second is engine control fan control fuel injection control wiper control anti braking anti brake locking system okay so there are many controls used here and many embedded systems are there so what's the inner working of it see here it can be divided into two parts first one is high speed electronic devices and um, low speed electronic control units okay high speed and low speed this means high speed are used for the microprocessors for the uh, most important tasks like anti lock braking system and steering controls and the speed controls okay those are important things so high speed electronic control unit is used and the second one is low speed electronic unit in this only um, those things for that uh, microprocessors are used which are not that important like audio controller and mirror controls door glass controls and all okay so for that uh, the microprocessors used are low speed um, electronic control units now since there are many embedded systems they have to communicate with each other for that we will be using a bus okay so uh, there are three types of bus based on the what uh, what is your requirement so if you have to um, make a communication line between two important embedded systems at that time controller area network will be used it supports medium to high speed and it's event driven and it has error handling um, support and it's employed in the important things like uh, power train systems anti lock braking systems and airbag okay and coming to the next level which is not that important things like um, seat positioning mirror controls fan controls for that local area uh, local internet network local interconnect network will be used okay it's a low speed network and the third one is media oriented system transport that means in um, car there will be a radio or a tv or a device connected in the back seat right so for that all um, um, communication between those embedded systems uh, media oriented system will be used it uses a layered approach uh, like a physical layer application layer, application layer and network layer for suppose that for radio you need a physical layer the connection to the uh, speaker okay and the radio is also connected wirelessly to the main um, tower right for that different layers are used for the speaker physical layer is used and for the um, transmission of the uh, radio waves the application layer is used and it uh, uses optical fiber for the cable connection now as you have seen before in the car there are many um, embedded systems in the car like all of these so this will be roughly divided into three parts okay so let's discuss what are those the first one is silicon providers what do these companies do they will provide the microcontrollers and the microprocessors second is tools and platform providers and third one is solution providers let's discuss the companies under each of these 
so silicon providers are responsible for providing the necessary chips uh, which are used in the control application development so the leading uh, silicon providers are uh, these follows okay okay and uh, let's discuss uh, uh, one or two what do the uh, what does the company analog devices provide it provides dsp dsp means digital uh, digital signal processing that means when the data is coming in an analog signal it will convert to digital and it will be shown in the screen okay and second is uh, gps led and microcontrollers similarly with the slight differences the other companies also provide the same things means uh, gps driver info system voice recognition so on security and safety and digital signal products and so on okay the next one is tools and platform providers this means they provide the various kinds of development tools and real time embedded operating system okay they provide development tools and operating systems now the major companies are this one enea uh, in enea they provide rtos means real time operating system cpu and dsp similarly matlab is provided by the mathwork company for numerical analysis and it provides also dps so in the uh, same way debugging tools and the um, operating systems are provided by the um, these companies solution providers means if there, there happens any error in your um, embedded system you will refer to these companies so they will try to uh, solve that error okay so some of the companies are these okay these solve the issues in the uh, companies listed here okay so there are many domains uh, so for e uh, so each company has chosen a uh, few of the domains for solving their problems the great need to uh, make the product manufacturing fast means time should be required less okay time should be very less in manufacturing a product from scratch to the end product okay so to achieve that there are two things we need to consider hardware and software should be combined okay that means they should um, do the task um, the engineers manufacturing the hardware and the engineers handling the software should cooperate with each other in the product okay because if the, these two are performed parallelly it will take a lot of a uh, lot amount of time but there are some few issues um, which were uh, in achieving this the first one is selecting the model model describes what is to be done means functionality and second one is selecting the architecture that means how it is to be done okay how the system can be manufactured there are few types first one is controller architecture if you want to handle the input and the output we will be using uh, controller architecture it will have to take the input and uh, show the output the second is the data path once we have the data to be um, processed it will be showing a graphical representation of how to perform the um, process on the two numbers or something okay like 1 plus 2 is 3 so this uh, this uh, gra graphical representation will be showing what is the task to be performed that comes under data path architecture the third one is finite state machine finite state machine means if you, uh, suppose that there is a machine here and uh, it has two options tea or coffee okay and we have to insert a coin here and uh, what will be the finite state machine the first state will be coin is inserted or not the user has choose tea or coffee based on that it will go to state d or state c and when the um, task is over means it has um, the machine has given the uh, coffee or the tea to the user at that time it would uh, it should return to the uh, initial state which is the taking of the coin okay for the next user so that um, model uh, describes the states of the um, task that's known as finite state machine the third one is uh, the fourth one is risk and sysk uh, that means it's a set of instructions uh, by uh, by using which we can um, code into the computer what what the task is to be performed okay and the fifth one is uh, single instruction multiple data and multiple instruction multiple data that uh, that means uh, pipelining pipelining means performing of the um, same task parallelly okay means at the same time i can fetch the data also execute also and do some other task at the same time okay which are independent tasks instead of waiting for this to over then start another one i can do that in the same time it will save a lot of time and the instructions for that uh, for achieving that is given by single instruction and multiple instruction okay the third issue is in selecting language because it's hardware and software for software it will be c c++ and java and for the hardware it will be vhdl verilog and system c so we have to choose very carefully which uh, language can um, which software languages can be used with the which so, uh, which hardware languages okay and the last one is the partni uh, partitioning the system requirements to hardware or software see the requirements are here if we want uh, if you want the uh, system uh, system to cooperate we have to choose first it will be implemented in hardware or software and uh, this decision this uh, decision will be very hard because it depends on uh, it depends on a lot of other factors okay now let's uh, discuss some uh, computational models using which we can represent the uh, process to be performed first one is data flow graph here uh, for example if you have to perform two tasks a plus b is equal to x and x minus c is equal to y 
how can we represent that in a form of a uh, graph see here a and b are the inputs i'll be writing here plus and I'll, I'll be getting x okay and x will be kept here and i'll be taking the input c then x and c will be subtracted and that will be the result so this graph shows the equations which are um, given here okay this model is known as data flow graph model the second one is control data flow graph model this is the same as the previous one but here we'll have if condition also for example if flag is one then perform this equation else perform this one so what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, um, we'll be using a conditional here if flag is one then do this else do this this one means a plus b that will be a plus b here else if it's false it will take this path and it will do a minus b okay this type of model is known as control data flow graph the third one is state machine models means it depends on the different states as i showed you in the uh, previous example for the t uh, for the t vending uh, machine first we have to insert a coin in the st uh, state a if it inserts the coin then it will uh, wait for the user's input if it's t it will go to state c else if it's coffee it will go to state d after it's uh, given the coffee or the tea it will come back to the first state which is insert coin see uh, when you buy a uh, juice or something in the um, vending machine at that time after after the uh, juice gets uh, delivered to you it will return back to the first state which is insert coin that's the uh, same thing which is happening here also and this type of representation is known as state machine models the fourth one is the sequential program model to understand this consider an example of seat belt warning system if you have sat in a car and you have not worn the seat belt and the car is on at that time it will wait for 5 seconds and if you have still not worn the uh, belt it will, will be sounded okay so how to represent that using a sequential program model first ignition key is on is the car on then wait for 10 seconds and we'll check if it's still on the uh, the passenger has worn seat belt or not it will be checked and if if he has not worn at that time set an alarm for timer 5 seconds it will wait for 5 seconds and if the ignition is still on it will uh, check if the seat belt is on if it's on then uh, if the seat belt has been worn it's okay if not it will alarm it okay and uh, there will be many possibilities means uh, here only seat belt will be um, worn so it will go to the uh, last part which is end okay means if the seat belt is worn there is no need for the alarm so this part will be skipped okay so in that way you can define the uh, all, uh, many process using sequential program model the fifth one is concurrent communication process model this is the same as the previous one but here we'll be dividing the task into many sub task okay so each task will be communicating with each other and um, perform, uh, performing the task based on the states of the other tasks okay and by using this they can achieve a common goal by um, by uh, by communicating uh, with each other effectively the last one is object oriented model see this is a class if you have a, if there is a problem here and uh, there is a solution designed here but uh, there are many different environments so what we can do is we can design one uh, blueprint of that uh, solution and we can make different objects out of it okay and after that we can uh, inherit the um, main properties of this and uh, customize accordingly according to the environment we can customize each object okay so this can be achieved using object oriented model hardware and the software but now uh, we'll be seeing a uh, firmware which means that it's the combination of hardware and the software and it has some characteristics of the hardware and some characteristics of the software so it looks like this it's a microchip and inside that it will be having set of instructions written in binary form okay so by using um, firmware we can make the um, task of um, combining hardware and the software easier okay so let's see how to design it and develop it there are two ways first one is conventional procedure uh, based firm design okay and this means that task a if uh, there are three tasks like uh, task a task b and task c to be performed okay so in this uh, in the firmware design what we'll be doing we'll be writing the task a and below it task b will be written and below it and below it task c will be written okay so what happens is after the task a gets over this will be executed and after that this one will be executed okay so the major disadvantage is that if any part of the code fails the whole code uh, the whole code will not run okay this was uh, this was this was the uh, first type of firmware design the second one is operating system based design there are uh, two types general and real time general purpose you can consider as a uh, microwave where the set of instructions are uh, written and it does not require any live event here means user will not input um, different values what are possible that much only will be executed okay so this is uh, this for the general purpose there is no real time um, operation in it on the other hand you can consider the real time operating system as the uh, live events or matches or the radios 
but uh, wherein uh, you will have the inputs from the user means uh, different data information will come and the uh, embedded system has to process it in the real time and give the output okay so that is the second one after getting to know the types let's uh, discuss the languages used in the development the, uh, there are three types first one is assembly level language which are uh, low level languages and the second one is high level languages like c and c plus plus and the third one is a combination of both we'll be discussing each of these and what are the limitations and the advantages okay the first is the assembly level language see the high level language is the c and c plus plus which humans can understand the binary one is the which which can uh, binary one is the ones and zeros which machine can understand in between that lies assembler level language okay it's partially understood by the human and the computer in uh, partially uh, in uh, assembly level language what is the thing is the code will be written in this form okay there are four parts it's partially understood by human also and partially understood by the computer also okay so uh, let's discuss the general format it will be having four parts this is the label and this is the opcode this is the operand uh, which is a destination operand and this is the source operand this is equivalent to a is equal to a plus 30 okay so 30 will be added with a and uh, it will be stored in a and this is the label uh, what is the use of label label if i write here lsx and this part and i'll go um and i move on to the um other part of the computer uh, other part of the code okay and after this if i want to execute this operation i can refer to it as uh, the label okay start from the label execute this one okay it's also called as branching okay that's the use for the label now what we had written is the source file okay source file needs to be converted into binary because a computer understands only binary so there are three steps in which we can convert the source file into binary the first one is the creation of an object by using an assembler so object will be created and that will be converted to hexadecimal and hexadecimal uh, file will be converted to um, binary okay library is uh, having a major source codes means all the big source codes will be stored in the library and whenever we need the particular function in our uh, code at that time we'll be calling the library function and we'll be using it instead of writing the whole source codes all the time it will be very uh, memory inefficient so what we'll be doing is we'll be including the library functions whenever needed the next one is linker and locator linker and locator means there are many modules inside the computer and each one will be linked by the linker and the locator will locate the uh, memory address of each of these okay linkers and locators are also used in the conversion of the um, source code to hexadecimal files okay conversion to uh, hexadecimal files is the last uh, stage in this uh, program after the code gets converted to hexadecimal file the um, computer will execute the code and there are few advantages of assembly based language which is uh, it is efficient and high performance and low level hardware access because it's written partially in the um, hardware language and the code reverse engineering code reverse engineering means suppose that uh, the product is um, a mobile phone okay so what we'll be doing is by observing the mobile phone we'll be trying to uh, find out how the mobile phone was manufactured at different points of time okay so this is called as, uh, this is called as reverse engineering it's opposite of the normal engineering which is uh, developing the product from the scratch the disadvantage is that the, it's high development time because it's a more technical language and due to that only the developer who develops the language will be able to know why he has written a particular amount of code okay see suppose that this line of code is written by the developer a he only knows why he has written that so if there happens to be any error it can't be referred to any other developer he has only to be referred so it's developer dependent okay and the uh, third one is non-portable means if the assembly level language is written for the uh, task a the task a only can be executed if you are trying to execute the task b using that it will produce errors okay so it's non-portable it can't be used for different tasks now this was about the first one assembly level language let's uh, discuss the second one high level language in high level language the languages used are c c plus plus and java and it uses a cross compiler which we'll be discussing uh, about uh, it in the upcoming topics which translates high level language to the process specific assembly code so these are the uh, main three operations here see here uh, the source file is um, converted to the object file by using a cross compiler and object file is converted to the hex file using linker and locator the advantage is that it uh, reduced development time and it's developer independency because the language is um, very easy to understand so it can be con uh, so if any error happens it can be uh, rectified it can be solved by any other developer also okay and it's portable so since it's an easy level language so we can um, use it in different conditions also by uh, making the appropriate changes okay so it's very highly portable uh, and the disadvantage includes um, high cost and uh, some compilers might uh, not be efficient okay these are the two disadvantages 
let's move on to the third one which is the last one a combination of both there are mainly two categories mis uh, mixing the assembly level language with high level language okay so all the code is written in the um, high level language and we are mixing some assembly level language with the high level language and the second one is high level language with the assembly level language let's uh, discuss about each of these it is done by using the cross compilers um, do not have a built-in support for implementing certain features okay so if uh, we have written some code here in a high level language like c or c plus plus at that time if some features are not um, supported by the c and c plus plus we can uh, include the um, assembly level language for performing that particular task okay so the conversion is as follows dot c language dot uh, c file which we have written that will be converted uh, to dot src source code and that will be to object and then uh, finally to binary file the next one is the um, opposite of it mixing a high level language with the assembly code means the source code is written in assembly level language and in case if we want some library functions to be included which are only in c at that time the assembly level language see this is the assembly code and this is the c functionality which uh, uses library okay but uh, to include this function inside the assembly level language we will be mixing the high level language into assembly level language okay that can be done by using inline assembly so uh, in, in between the c code if a small piece of assembly code is uh, needed one can uh, include it using this um, hashtag here and this hashtag here okay in between this you can include the code uh, in assembly level language where you want the whole code is c plus plus okay c or c plus plus and in between you can include this code okay differentiate between c and embedded c it's very important c is a general purpose programming language whereas embedded c is a specific um, language developed for some uh, specific task okay and the second difference is bug uh, fix is easy and here it's not easy because the language is very technical okay and the third one is it's hardware independent and uh, embedded c is hardware dependent because it's written in assembly level language and uh, fourth one is c uses standard compilers which can be used for all other um, codes but uh, whereas in Emirates C, there is a specific, uh, specially designed um, compiler for the particular task. Okay, for task A, there will be separate compiler, and for task B, there will be separate compiler. Okay. The last one is compiler versus uh, cross compiler. Compiler is used only for compiling programs written, uh, written on the same platform, and cross compiler will uh, can be used to compile uh, programs written in different platforms so platform means apple os linux and all okay so uh, if you use a compiler you can only compile in the same platform whereas cross compiler can be used for compiling both of these okay